of Stay Hot. I'm Bladen Kirk, joined as always by my two favorite co-hosts of all time, Matthew Spunauer and Theo Ash. Today, we've got a little bit of NFL news to talk about. The uh, owners decided to make some rule changes against the players' wishes. Uh, so we'll have to talk about that. And then uh, got to talk about Dak Prescott. He's got a contract year coming up. Got to talk about J.J. McCarthy a little bit, even though we already did our quarterback prospects ranking episode. Uh, the McCarthy hype has grown since then, so it's time to revisit that conversation again. And then Matt might have an NBA player to discuss with us today. But before oh, we get into we all of that, <laughs> oh, we might. But before we, we get into all of that, how are you guys doing today? I'm doing good. I'm going to the uh, Suns versus Nuggets game tonight at 8 at the Ball Arena. About to see go. Jokic play in real life. Oh, there you go. Um, hopefully, I, I don't think that he's out. I haven't looked at any injury reports. Okay. It's going to be kind of an important game for the Suns, who have been on a bit of a skid here down the uh, stretch. I don't have high hopes that they will beat the Nuggets. But it should be fun to watch them try here tonight at the Ball Arena. Yeah, uh, man, it's 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 not been pretty for for Phoenix, and um, with O'Neal being an expiring and Grayson Allen being an expiring, and mm. no picks and mm. the no trade tonight. I will. Real. I don't know. Tonight they'll lock in. Okay, no <laughs> doubt about lock it. In. So you, you, see, you see Kevin Durant, you see Booker, you see mm -hmm. uh, Jokic. You know, it's a pretty good lineup. I'm going, you know, I'm I going to the uh, – oh, go ahead. I just haven't been to a, a Nuggets game all year. And, like, the year is coming to an end. So even if it means I paid to watch the Suns lose, I, I have to do it. Oh, you got to see Jokic. I'm going to Reds uh, opening day tomorrow uh, there you i'm go. pretty pumped about that i'm pretty excited about the reds despite their injuries uh i don't think it's over i do think ali de la cruz will win mvp i do think he's going to probably hit around 1100 obs um i think these are simple and achievable things i'm pumped though <laughs> i've been i've been looking forward to the red season all year who do they play uh the nationals Fair enough. they were good last year they were they were close so i i I'm super. Hey, biased. I had fun. I had fun at the one Reds game I went to with you guys. So uh, even though it was a terrible game, they were they got down and then they were out immediately. But we yeah. believe because I mean the other two games we had gone to that year, they went down huge immediately and then came back and won both of them. Mm. Um, I made like the five one I was at. Day. They hit there. Was, there was a grand slam. I mean that's pretty. Yeah, I think we were down it's like nine bad. at that point. I think it didn't matter at all. I forget <laughs> Chris what Paul hit was. a huge, <laughs> hit a huge <laughs> three at the lead. Uh, so Theo, but, you're seeing Jokic. That's a bucket list you, player. Blaine? Um, I don't, I don't have a whole lot going on. Just been practicing with my band recently, but I don't have any band practice tonight. Uh, I was a little late getting here to start recording because I had to take my comforter for my bed over to my parents so that my mom can wash it, which sounds bad, but it's literally just because I have a king size bed and my washing machine does not fit a king size comforter. Okay. That's valid. And rather than spend like $600 on a new washer, I'm just like, I'll just go to my mom's every once in a while. Sports and... podcaster who needs mom <laughs> to wash his bed sheets. <laughs> it's not looking good. No, I wash my own bed sheets. I swear. It's just the comforter. <laughs> No, no, I, I feel you. Um, <laughs> Sounds one thing I've been thinking about all day. Context. One thing I've been thinking about all day is the Caleb Williams stuff. This is my my favorite. Oh yeah, I God. think I think the the pink phone and he's a boy. And why does he have a pink phone? Because pink <laughs> is a girl color. It's it's like it's so silly. It's so ridiculous. I don't know how anybody <laughs> does not reflect upon themselves and realize if they're saying i mean that's just messed up i wouldn't draft them how it's, silly it's over being. for me if they find my phone color it's very over <laughs> you yeah do you have a red don't, phone it's... no it's not red do you have a pink phone it's like no it's not pink either it's like light purple it's like lilac oh, purple. maybe 
I'll just show they're it. Gonna get, they're gonna I'm get putting my career one, on the line. <laughs> oh, it looks no, probably just white. No. But if you no, if you really no. never if you really look at it, you'll again. see that there are some purplish tints in there. So I mean, never listening you, to stay hot again. I, I enjoyed the the tweet that was like, Caleb isn't weird. He's just the first Gen Z quarterback. It's like, what are you guys talking about? There's been multiple draft classes now with Gen Z. Plus, there are other Gen Z. It was, it was, in he's the a first class. Gen Z quarterback, and they're really weird. It's like, bro, it's, <laughs> and they're freaks. It's like, they're freaks. Know, man. It's, he's not the first. He's just the most Gen Z quarterback so far. That's, that's he's just all. the most, he's just the most fucking like california college quarterback i don't know he's like somebody somebody in my comment section said let him zest in peace and i thought that was (laughs) funny (laughs) (laughs) that's that's insane michael michael penix was born in 2000 but he he counts as a gen xer because he he never paints his nails um yeah i think that it's it's all pretty funny i i don't really People call it whatever, zesty, whatever. I think maybe (laughs) I thought about making an image that is like one of those old 2012 iFunny or Instagram posts about One Direction. It's like calling One Direction gay (laughs) isn't an insult. And it's like a bunch (laughs) of pictures of like Harry Styles on an an iPhone 6 or whatever, 5. Oh my God. Like, I need a bunch of blurry Caleb pictures and put them. <laughs> Calling Caleb gay isn't an insult. <laughs> I, I, we don't care. <laughs> I think I would have gone. I think that would have gone viral, man. I really do. But Caleb, yeah, Caleb kind of fights a lot out. on Twitter, doesn't he? He does fight his own battles on there. And maybe if I Which made I that. Which I appreciate. Game, Probably I more it. so than any other quarterback that I can think of in the NFL. Like, by a lot, honestly. Like, he's sort of just on Twitter. Yeah, Lamar, really is, on on there. Lamar is on there. Lamar is But also, what else is he going to be doing right now? Right? I mean, most I'm of working us out, must... not being on Twitter, ah, fighting oh. with people. <laughs> Literally <laughs> any other to possible way. His damn spend. nails, honestly, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> I guess so, Lamar, man. I guess Lamar is on Twitter more. I, I guess I don't see his tweets on my timeline. Lamar, even tweets, though I follow Lamar him. tweets a lot. Lamar tweets a lot. He's sort Lamar of like engaged. Is is. <laughs> his tweets are so <laughs> underrated sci-fi and fantasy Johnny. movies but he's but he's looking he's he's it's like sort of engagement baby but he's looking for a movie he doesn't he obviously doesn't doesn't care to well he does that. he does fight he has like defended his own and his teammates mm-hmm. honors before on mm-hmm. there it, it it has definitely happened i'm trying to think of what other quarterback has like a twitter rogers is has it but he never fights on there he goes on McAfee's show. I don't think Lamar is active quite in the same way that Caleb is, but he's pretty. We got seven and a half thousand. I'm just, probably. yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. Baker doesn't do it. He would be a contender in my mind for most active on Twitter, defending his honor or trolling people or whatever. Yeah, it's it's know. not much. No, it's not very common. You guys want to get into some rule changes? Oh, oh my yeah, let's God. let's talk about these. We have the first one we have to talk about is the hip drop tackle, because I I I don't even necessarily have an opinion as far as whether or not it should be banned. My main issue with it is the fact that the NFLPA said that they would prefer that it not be banned, and the owners deemed it necessary to ban anyway. I think that's pretty ridiculous, and. I think it was it was either Jokic Joe Star or someone else that was like, if this happened in the NBA, the league would be on strike for months until they got that fixed. Well, hip drop tackles are banned in the NBA. <laughs> really, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I can't argue with that, man. <laughs> I, I, I see what you I mean. I guess I, I'm not a fan of it. I, I think that it's just too like nobody is hip drop tackling guys like on purpose. It's just sort of like the tackle you can pull off sometimes, you know, like that's yeah, what you can do. And I feel like 
even even if it is a little bit more injury uh, maybe if it's a little bit bigger of an injury risk at some point you have to ask yourself like there there's certain is is this the type of uh risk that i can legislate out of the game and i think the answer is like probably not man you know mm-hmm. I, I when you play football when you play in the nfl you're accepting a certain level of risk and i think hip drop tackle like that could possibly happen to you like you get tackled weird and you maybe tear your acl it's a big injury it's a big deal players don't want it to happen obviously but it's it's the type of thing it, it, it's it's really not that common of a tackle and it feels like it's it's just too it's not worth it it's going to be too difficult mm-hmm. to try to ref i feel bad for the refs almost i mean you can see and now it's like oh it has to meet these three criteria we have to tackle and then spin into it. it's like dude they're never getting that yeah, one but you know the rest are like you can do it oh i don't God. know I, I i i completely agree matt i think that it's for the future of the league, it's good to legislate hits to the head out of the game just because there was so much pressure mounting when the CTE studies came out. I mm-hmm. think that that's just a different kind of organ, a There's different a kind of muscle that you can't you know, mess with. So right. you ban hits to the head. That's all good with me. And, and even if there's a collision downfield that may not be totally invertent from a defensive back, but it was helmet to helmet contact and you just really want to force it into guys to find some other way to defend a pass than, than lower the helmet. Like I I understand trying to legislate that out of the game, but yeah, as far as the tackles go that don't involve the head, I think that it's all pretty much should be fair game in the sport of football. I, I think that whatever you have to do to bring a guy down, not by the equipment, like a horse collar and, right. and a face mask also makes sense to me, but if you're a smaller guy tackling a bigger guy, I think sometimes it's kind of necessary to yeah. wrap them around, wrap your arms around their waists, and then drop your weight. Like you're not going to be able to totally uproot them with pure strength if you're a smaller player. So I think it hurts the undersized guys across the league. Obviously, trying to make a tackle from behind gets more difficult because a lot of times you kind of got to drag them backwards to inhibit them from getting more yards, which is like the whole point of the sport. Mm-hmm. just to stop them from getting yards so yeah you're gonna make the most effective tackle and sometimes yeah it's the hip drop and it's not that many times over the course of a season and i think there's going to be a lot of confusion on exactly what constitutes the the twist aspect of it because i saw lots of clips being like this one would this one is a hip drop tackle but it's not a twist hip drop tackle it's like well i just don't know if the refs are going to be able to call this consistently i don't want to see it called the, the quarterback hit rules have not aged any better to me. It's not like I've gotten used to all that bullshit where no. quarterbacks get tapped a little bit and a flag Great gets point. thrown. People people have been like, oh, you'll just get used to this like all the other rules. And it's like oh. one of the big rules in terms of p- protecting players getting hit is the quarterback rules, and those still suck all these years later, and it's obvious. Uh, every, and I think this every, every single game I get mad about it, man. I mean, once a game, there's just some like – ridiculous like oh this guy like brushed his hand up against the quarterback's helmet on accident because like the lineman is like oh that's 15 yards it sucks dude it's really terrible yeah um yeah and if this penalty goes down that path it's horrible and i saw a uh, a clip from the video they showed about what constitutes a swivel hip drop tackle or whatever and i think it was matabike t- chasing down Tannehill, and matabike had to like get around a guard like at an angle, he couldn't like squarely hit Tannehill because there was a lineman in the way, right? He's got to bend around the edge. Then Tannehill start, starts to bail out of the pocket. So he has to kind of dive and mm. reach out from him, wrap him up. And like, that's the only way that he could have brought T- Tannehill down there. Right. And he can't hit the quarterback high or low. So really, like, it's and he can't really drop difficult. His weight on him. It's like, and you, he you can't have drop to his weight on him. It's like, like oh you can't even God. tap it. Like, dude. I know. And and, and if is, he gets rid of the ball, you have like one step, which is really in some cases like not enough time to pull up. It it just feels impossible. And when I see, you know, a JJ Watt talking about like what are we supposed to do? Have to agree, man. I don't have yeah, to agree. And, and the chairman of the competition committee said like the defensive players say, come up to me against this rule. And they say, like, how am I supposed to bring the guy get down? And the chairman commissioner guy said, Well, it's 
our job to protect the offensive players in those situations. They're defenseless is the word he used. They're defenseless. And it's like, how is a ball carrier defenseless? I understand it when wide receivers are running the route, like before they catch the ball, they can't get hit in the head, like defenseless receiver and all that, that I yeah. get more. But when a guy catches the ball and like turns up field and they get tackled from behind, like that to me is like, if that's defenseless in the sport of football, what isn't defenseless? Like, I don't understand how that qualifies. They have yeah, the ball. The only, they're trying the to pick up yards. Like, the guy behind them is trying to bring them down. If they're defenseless and, and the defender just has to let them go there, like, or might have to, I, I just don't understand it. I, I'm very comfortable with the level of physicality in football and the injury risk that comes with it in the lower body. And yeah. I, I think that, yeah, the onus or the, the prioritization should be to bring the guy down more than players and, 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 the, the, players, time. and, and, and the players agree with you on this that's mm -hmm. the, that's the crazy thing is it's like, a contact sport it's like if i turn into an mma right. game like or a boxing match an mma yeah. game an mma match <laughs> or a boxing match and mm -hmm. someone gets like leveled in their face and like knocked out that's what i'm expecting to see man and and in football yeah. i think that when the sport is the guy can catch it and then run up field and the more yards they gain, the better it is for them. Like, yeah, there's going to be a lot of physicality trying to stop that guy and try to tackle him. And it's going to be rough. I, I understand that about football and I don't know why it seems like the owners don't, but yeah, it's cause it's their money. That's why yeah, protecting their investment, I guess. Yep. Absolutely. Which, that's what it is. I think that's almost entirely what it is. And I think it's very interesting that, the owners feel like that, but the players who it's, you know, them getting tackled feel less like that. Um, I don't know. Yeah, and the fans don't well, like it. I, I don't want to. And the fans don't like it. I, I think it's a pretty small group of people who like this, this rule. Um, and who is I, it I'm that's really posting the rugby clips? Is it Sam Monson that's been posting yeah, the rugby PFF clips? Yeah, the PFF and fantasy people are probably most likely to get a kick out of this rule. And the rugby clips are silly to me because rugby is just very different than football and it's easier yeah, to it's tackle softer. I'm not saying that there's no lessons we can take from rugby, but being like, yeah. oh, it's easy to not hip jock tackle. Look at this rugby clip. And in the clip, the rugby guy, who is huge, is getting tackled by the smaller player, right? the gigantic guy with the ball hits the ground and just throws it backwards to his teammate. So he wasn't, he wasn't trying to like break that tackle at all. Right. Because right. the rules are different. He can hit the ground and still make a play from there. So it's just not as urgent for him to break tackles, meaning it's not as urgent for the tackler to bring the guy down, like by whatever method possible. I just, the body types are different. The speed of the game is different. There's no forward passing. So you're not really chasing guys down from behind. Like all these rugby clips I'm seeing are naive about the sport of football because they're just not transferable situations a lot of the time. Yeah. And some of these clean rugby tackles, I'm like, I kind of see the, like I think a ref could still kind of call this a hip drop. Like he's the, his lower body, his ass and legs are like oh. falling down around the legs of the guy who's trying to tackle. And like, that's kind of what it takes to, for this to get called based on what I read. So I am not anticipating it going smoothly. I think that it will be very frustrating, but I guess we'll see. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, and I, honestly, the slippery slope people, my friend texted me, they kind of win, man like oh they're they're making the game softer what's next like blah blah blah. it's like yep they're just banning a type of tackle now you know this this does feel like it's going to keep going that way too if if something i mean I, I, we hadn't heard about hip drops until this year right right warren and, sharp will pay for his crimes it's like all of a sudden it's like well this was a hip drop tackle and that's what hurt him and then boom it's done it's like wow man i can't believe that and i, I think at any given time we could have another one of those pop up and all of a sudden that offseason it's banned and things get even more difficult for the defense and any drive. Yeah, and if you, ended if by, you plug a hole, oh, I'm sorry, Matt, I'm interrupting you. I, I, I think my, my big problem with it is like, you know, we have to have flags in football, obviously. Holding is, is a, a material advantage or pass interference is like a material advantage, right? Mm -hmm. Those we can accept, even though they do suck. Like it, in a perfect world, we play games with no flags. But the flags that fans really hate are the ones where it's not even necessarily like an advantage for the other team. Like 
taunting being 15 yards doesn't really affect play, but it's a 15 yard penalty. We hate that. Roughing the passer outside of when it's really egregious, like they're trying to hurt the quarterback, which could affect play. We hate that because it doesn't really affect the play. If you hit the quarterback mm-hmm. a tiny little bit, you know, after they, they throw the ball. And this is another one of those rules where it can be 15 yards for like an honest mistake or just trying to make a tackle in the only way that you can. And mm-hmm. it's yeah. if, if I see a drive extended by this, which you will eventually, first time it happens, it's it's just going to be a bummer, man. And it just doesn't have to happen. Like again, like mm-hmm. you said, I had never thought about it or cared or heard about it, and I would have been perfectly happy never thinking about it. Like no one has an issue with it. And if, if you're going to really de-emphasize hits to the head and say they can't happen at all like yeah tackles are going to be lower there's going to be right. more like dragging people down that, and, and banning this we, like we, we maybe a new years, technique will we spent years like perfecting also- new ta- tackling techniques to wrap around the waist and now all of a sudden you have to now f- figure out a new yeah, now you have method. to worry about I when wonder, you do that i like, wonder how that's going to impact the quality of tackling this year like how many big runs are we going to see? How many, you know, big yards after the catch plays are we going to see this year? You know what's interesting though? They banned this, but they kept the tush push. Again, interesting. Hmm. The tush push should have been kept. I don't know why you wouldn't. You no, would I, I, but so should but. the hip drop should also have been kept. Like <laughs> Yeah, you're right. The other the other rule that they changed is the kickoff rule. Uh I I've tried to read like the charts and like the graphs and like the rules and shit, but as a as a TikTok pilled Gen Zer, I couldn't bring myself to to I got, comprehend I got it fully. But I did see that. I think I got a good handle on it because I watched like a video about it and yeah. <laughs> saw all the I'm, clips of the kickoff being performed. And I'm pro it. It seems like yeah. more kickoffs will be returned. It looks like a running play, damn near. And I like running plays. It, it seems fine to me if it reduces injury risk and makes the play more exciting. Yeah, there, there's so just no need. To like... There's just no need for blockers and like tacklers to be colliding head on at full speed, like thirty yards, forty yards apart. There's just no need for that. Yeah, and that's <laughs> not taking anything away from the physicality of the game. It's just changing where guys line up before the snap which is fine i think like that's not really taking anything away that's just making it safer in a very authentic way that doesn't make the defensive players like have to think before they make a routine play or something like that so i i was a fan of the kickoff rule yeah it'll Um, keep like you don't lose lanes like you can still have lane integrity and because they can't it's actually important yeah right and they they uh they can't even go in until the, the the returner catches it. So I, I think, it's, I think it's a perfectly plus yeah, addition. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, I'm a huge fan of it. I think you're being completely ridiculous if you disagree. I think people are entirely wrong. Anybody who is against this is like <laughs> play in level. This is different and I don't like it type of stuff to me. Uh, kickoffs suck right now. They're terrible. They're yes. legitimately the worst play in football outside of an extra point. And with the extra point, mind you, they purposely tried to make that more interesting, right? It's sort of supposed to be a gimme, but even that they tried to make more interesting. How many kickoffs mm-hmm. even get returned and how many of those returns are anything other than like running into a pile of people and maybe it's like a three yard difference. Like most of them, even if they do with this, mm-hmm. you are incentivized to return it. And if a return doesn't happen, it's, honestly beneficial for the return team like it's it's a big deal uh the the kickers right because they get it on the 35 right yeah 25. they get it on the 35 um, oh now the yeah now it's the 35 if they were talking about before yeah. it was the 25 before um, yeah that's yeah yeah so you get it on the the 35 now so it puts more pressure on the kicker and it makes uh their kick more interesting and then it's going to lead to more returns, uh, which will be exciting. And I honestly think there's going to be more strategy in how you return. Like, there's going to be new stuff that they're going to try to do. And mm-hmm. we, we saw, you know, in the XFL, like, uh, them run, like, reverses and whatnot. And 
they could try like lead blocker type stuff and like pull guys i think it's gonna be i think it's gonna be really exciting how they they try to do it but then i guess it depends on where it gets kicked it's a whole new layer of strategy the returns it does help the offense like it, it is on average better for the return team uh, field position wise versus like the old way of doing it but i don't think that's a bad thing i don't think putting a little bit more importance on the special teams is a bad thing at all people are like oh this is just going to help offenses if it makes the game more exciting and more interesting outside of just like more points good which i think this very specifically does why would i be against that i'm cool with the offense having five extra yards on average that's fine by me uh and returners being yeah, the, more valuable good for them i like it a lot yep yeah, yeah I, if, I, if you remember I, the uh the john boyce video why kickoffs are terrible he goes into like the whole <laughs> diagramming of like how every kickoff that even it even the ones that are touchdowns all just follow the same that three i patterns. hate that john boyce video though. you hate that, that is I the the argument that like even when a foot kick does get returned for a touchdown it's still boring is the dumbest shit I've ever heard because it's ah. like in a straight line. I do not agree with that. That's like saying like oh a go route is boring. Look at the line that all of these touchdowns No, because are. on a go route you still have to like unless they are wide open, but like you still have to execute something. Like what, you don't on a kick side of a kick. A lot of, a lot of times a kick returner that scores a touchdown, they can just they just like hit a lane but, and they're but gone. What, but but isn't the blocking but a lot of go routes that score a touchdown just burn the, like run by the corner and they're gone? Not and like Matt, I agree with you on the blocking, but like from a viewer I agree perspective, with that's John, not the, interesting. The video that the kickoff is but like the worst I, play, but that part of the video that you just brought okay. up like makes me well. So the mad. the other part of it that he brings up was uh, the field position difference. And like how on average, even if you're like the difference between like at the 25, at the 35, or at the 45 is basically negligible, like for like an offense's chance of scoring, like it doesn't actually make that big of a difference. So I, I, it, I it might I, only help the offense, but it's not by that much. That's all. The only the only complaint that I well, there's two complaints I really get. Number one, surprise onside kick not being a thing is bad. But in all honesty, we're probably going to the yard, you know, fourth and 15 thing here in the next couple of seasons, I would guess, uh, which is better, in my opinion, um, yeah. and more more exciting. And if we're going to do that, then this kickoff doesn't have that downside. And the other one is it being kind of complicated at first. It is a little bit confusing, but I also think that probably falls in the category of like, we're just not used to it. And anybody who's a holdout yeah, I, and doesn't like this, I would guess, give it, give it, give it some time. Plus they've only committed to it for a year. So if we're all wrong about, you know, this play mm -hmm. and it turns out the original kickoff was better. Fair enough. We can go back to it. Yeah. Yeah. Also, how much what, of how much of an onside? How often are onside kicks really a surprise? Like even very, a surprise very, on very, kick, very. it's like you know it's coming. Yeah. One stupid <laughs> Saints play in the Super Bowl has ruined how often <laughs> onside kick to start the second kick <laughs> has ruined how often surprise onside kick happened discourse yeah. forever. Although it was a cool play, <laughs> I do get it. It was a cool play. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, but. I wish I wish they there could still be onside kicks or surprise onside kicks, but I think that overall it will make the play more exciting, and I think that yeah, that is a rule that everybody will quickly get used to, and I don't. There's no real reason to be mad at it on Sundays that I can ascertain. So, I'm really pumped for it. I'm really really excited <laughs> for it to be honest with you. Um, the other getting into a little bit of the news though. Uh, the Dak Prescott going into the final mm. year of his contract with no extension. It's bizarre. I kind of agree with it. I don't know if I agree with it, but I think it's interesting that a team is finally putting their foot down and saying we're not going to give out the $60 million this time. I, I've kind of been flirting with the idea that that is a good plan, um, but I've always wanted it more for, like, Tua. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for, like, I, to be, um, the fact that it's happening with Dak is, hurts my heart a little bit because I, I like Dak as a quarterback, but mm -hmm. 
the, well, here's, you know, the second contract. He hasn't been to the NFC Championship game. Maybe this, at the very least, lights a bit of a fire under the offense or something. I don't know. It gives him a little bit of a chip going into this year. Like the feeling of comfort maybe is gone. I don't know if that was affecting Dak at all, but I could. Uh, it's an interesting little experiment that they are doing, um, potentially mm. letting him walk. I think I agree with it a lot. And I, I think that you cannot sit here and say the stupid Cowboys, they're not going to get any better this off season. What are they doing? And then be like, well, they have to pay Dak $70 million. It's like, dude, that's the number one thing locking them down right now. They can't just pay everybody forever and then also get better forever. I feel like the Dak era for better or worse, whether it's his fault or not, has kind of run its course if they cannot either get him for significantly cheaper than what he's getting paid right now, or if they can't make their team way better, or if, if he doesn't, you know, become like the true like top five guy that I just don't think he quite is. Uh, so I, I'm not saying that they're necessarily going to let him go entirely. That's not the decision they've made just yet. Uh, they could still franchise him, or they could still, you know, sign him to another contract. And maybe after this year, other options open for him and, and it's not the right thing to do. But I think immediately, immediately hitting, you know, the we can't possibly let this go because then we might be bad for a little while is OK when it feels like you're not you're like your ceiling is not a Super Bowl. And I'm starting to feel like maybe the Cowboys ceiling is not a Super Bowl. Definitely feels like it might be the case this year. And I could see how a big debt contract could make it certainly true for years after. So I, I'm kind of I'm kind of on the Cowboys side. Yeah, I think it's tough. I don't know. I don't know if I if I could say that I'm on the Cowboys side. I'm not totally against it because It'll give us at least a case study, but Dak is pretty good. And I wonder, I think he's going to have a great regular season as usual. And if they go, if he plays any kind of good in the playoffs, just one time, the Cowboys might regret their decision big time. Like if, if this is the time they go to the NFC championship, then, then Dak walks and you're kind of left without a, without a guy for no reason. But that hasn't happened in the playoffs for Dak. So maybe it would be well, foolish to say that this is. I, I, yeah, I can say that. What if he doesn't? Anything. And then, yeah. And then he, you're stuck paying a guy a bunch of money who hasn't played good in the playoffs before. I think you can only really work on, on what you already know. And I like Dak a lot. Like, I think he's a top 10 quarterback, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to pay him whatever he wants, no matter what. And at the end of the day, like probably, the Cowboys letting that go and then seeing if they can find another guy or, you know, take a shot high in the first round and hope to find another franchise guy and get, get the cheap contract and win a Super Bowl that way. Like the odds of that working out better and then being more successful doing that than just keeping Dak and having maybe a lower ceiling, it's low. Probably just better off keeping Dak in terms of the win total. But it's hard to get excited about a team that, you know, going into the year, it feels like, yeah, they're probably going to win like 10, 11 games, but. They're probably not going to be like Super Bowl contenders, or they didn't make this Super Bowl last year from that close, and they got worse. I don't know. How about My, this though? Should they be exploring a Dak Prescott trade now more urgently? Then it's it's possible. It's possible that maybe I could see a little bit more where like if you're not going to extend him you're kind of playing this game of chicken where you potentially are going to end up getting way less in return for an MVP candidate yes. than you could. If you were like, look, we don't think like, cause if you're, if your mentality is like, we don't think Dak is going to win a Super Bowl, We don't think this roster is there. Like, could you not trade Jack Dak now? Like pretty for pretty much top I mean, dollar. Well, he still well, has this last I, year left and is coming off a franchise uh, tag him after five. this year. Yeah, you could maybe you could definitely finagle a maybe a tag and trade type situation, but you might lose out on a little bit of value well, if you do that. I don't know. I don't though, think exactly. you would. Maybe it would. Maybe it'd be the exact Cause, same. Cause but Dak would be another year older, and I guess say. I, I, I think it would come down to like you know, okay, well he's on a one year deal now, so somebody would trade for him, and they'd need the extension, right? 
So Dak would have to agree to go there. So if you wait a year, like, yeah, he's a year older, maybe you lose a little bit of value that way, but you franchise tag him, he's on a one-year deal, and the team you trade him to would need an extension. So I feel like it's honestly kind of comparable value. I don't know. I, I, I'm willing to hear out the Cowboys a little bit on this, even though I do think Dak is really good. It's really not me sitting here saying, like, Dak sucks, so yeah, yeah I wouldn't pay him, which a decent number of people are like. That's That's not my point, but... My contingency, or I guess my counterclaim would be if the case against Dak is that he's not a great playoff performer. Again, we've talked about this before. Who is? Like Mahomes, Stafford, maybe Allen? I feel, like, uh, I, I, feel, I feel that way to some extent. Like Dak has been more disappointing these last two seasons, especially I think than even just average play, like Allen has not been as disappointing as Dak. Burrow probably hasn't been as disappointing as Dak, even sure. though his playoff numbers are better. But I do think, like, overall, I I would rank my favorite playoff performances performers or the guys I'd rather have with me in the playoffs. Instead of looking at their past playoff resume, I'd rather look at just their entire body of work. And so if Dak is the, the ninth best quarterback overall or the, the seventh best or wherever you put him. Right. He's probably like the seventh guy you would take in the playoffs as well. And even with all the badness that's happened, he's still a top 10 guy I would take in the playoffs as well. Like, You can't give the seventh best quarterback uh, record setting money and win a Super Bowl. But that's the, yeah, that's the thing where you it's like it. if he's demanding 70 yeah. or million or something absolutely insane. Um, like, yeah, that is... That it's, is a bit low. It is a smidge low. It's right on that borderline. Like I like Dak a lot, but it's right on that borderline. I've, and I've been, I've been hoping for years a, a team kind of tries it. Like as long as it's not like my team, Jordan Love, just to like to see too what scary. happens. It's scary to do. <laughs> I'll say that. Um, it's it's way scary to do. But uh, I mean, Mahomes has been getting paid, and Stafford did. But honestly, dude, how Stafford was playing, like he. I definitely take Super Bowl Stafford over Dak. Not a question about it. I yeah, think, I, I think I, 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 I think. think that that's pretty valid. Um, Stafford over Dak. Yeah, and again, Especially I like Dak. I do. It's not. It's not his fault. Like he is on the borderline. If I were him, I would want a hundred million dollars. I think. Um, I'm not him, and I want a hundred million dollars. But <laughs> <laughs> under selling him there, he, you'd want. <laughs> I, What's I meant 65 like times four. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're we'll trying to, we're trying to set go on, okay, go on, go on, you go on. But, um, I, missed it, I, I don't know. I, I do get the Cowboys position here. I, I think it's not just out of them being stupid or Jerry Jones being stupid, which is not to say that Jerry Jones is never stupid, but. I, I get it, yeah. and I think them being brave. Like, here's the thing. You, you talk about, like, oh, Tua. I would do it with Tua. You don't think that Tua is a top-10 quarterback, like, at all. You don't think Tua is, like, very good. So, like, saying I wouldn't pay him as the highest-paid, you know, QB <laughs> yeah, in yeah. the entire NFL, it's like, well, yeah, probably not. And right. with the Vikings, it's like Kirk Cousins, I don't think is quite as good as Dak. And then he's also, like, 36 and coming off a torn Achilles it's like, okay, well, that's that's a little bit different, like not giving him a four-year deal. And again, he only got, you know, 180 over four years. That's not really like a record-setting quarterback money like probably Dak would would get. Um, the, the last quarterback in free agency as good as Dak Prescott would probably be Peyton. Yeah. And I'm sure he was the highest-paid QB at the time, no? He must have oh, been I there. No, maybe I'm d- way off. Maybe, maybe, he, maybe. he was coming. He was coming off the neck injury, and I was also like 11 at the time, so <laughs> it's possible that, yeah, like the neck injury made him a huge discount, and I just don't remember. But I'd have to imagine Peyton Manning in open market I got a lot of money. But um, <laughs> probably he probably did all right. <laughs> yeah, I'll watch it with morbid interest. I I think. Yeah, we're not high on the Cowboys off season over here, so it's not like I was super high on their ability to to win a Super Bowl anytime it, soon. But it is very bizarre that they're going in on this this mentality of well, we're not going to extend Dak, and if the idea is that you want to save money so that you can actually build a team, 
and then you can then slot the quarterback into the built team. They didn't do anything. Right? That's so well, yeah. they still have deck. Yeah, but you can't they didn't even like backload anything for the future. Like if the point is to try well, and would, like I don't I I I I I don't think I, I agree with that outlook where it's like you have to start then also building the team like you're not going to have that like they're basically saying we might have to reset we might not actually be maybe able to do it but if but if Dak you get rid much. of Dak is that is that now are the Cowboys a more attractive free agency destination so you have to go I, I don't think I don't think you have to if, if we're saying we might have to reset without Dak so we need to go backload contracts like right now right this I don't, I don't I don't know yeah, man. Not, not necessarily I think I think you have to trade Dak I, you, there's just no way you can let him walk I guess that's my take letting him walk you for can nothing s- would be tough I, I think that that is a very tough thing to swallow to, to say we had this asset he was a top 10 quarterback he would have fetched multiple first round picks if he got traded right now he, he definitely would and if they wait a year and then he just goes in free agency, like that would be crazy. Cause like, has what that, are the odds? When you was replace? the last time that has happened? A top 10 quarterback, not coming off of an injury hits open market. You you've got a Russell Wilson it, I think. And, and s- trade him a year before his extension is up. And mm. if you think that that's the kind of back half to the career that Dak is going to have, which Maybe he will. I think his game will age better than Russ's. So maybe this isn't a good idea. But the quarterback contracts are pretty crazy. But now that I'm thinking about it more, I'm maybe saying that this is not a good idea to play turkey with him. But chicken, what, what do you say? Play ch- chicken? Turkey. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're, he's you're already been on a fr- I don't know how the franchise tag rules chicken. work. He's already been on one. So maybe, maybe I could be way off. If you can still franchise tag him after this year, even for like a. Like, a billion dollars then i think it's perfectly fine i have no and if, yeah, if they let him walk for nothing can. then that's like just entirely on them just like being stupid okay sure um but if their strategy is 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 to like we're gonna see like we don't think this team is going to be able to get it done and we might have to reset without deck i think that's a very smart way to look at it and i think there's a very good chance that they are right that they are correct mm-hmm. and that is true and that they will not win a super bowl with Dak prescott I think it's I mm-hmm. think it's likely. And the thing is, it feels like they've gotten some good like they haven't been perfect drafting at all, but they have gotten some a lot of the other big time pieces around them. And I just think you got to really, really hit on a lot of guys now because, you know, Micah and CD are, are getting paid. And it's like, well, you can't possibly lose either of those guys. And then if you're paying everybody all this money, it's it's too much. And they've, yeah, been so they've restructured you, contracts. Had- they've traded for vets. They've tried, man. Yeah, he, they have the offensive player of the year candidate and a defensive player of the year candidate, and they have not gotten to a conference championship round. And it's largely because yeah. of Dak playing like ass in the divisional for two years in a row. So I I understand it. I, I definitely do. But I also think if this ends, if this is beginning a path that ends with Dak leaving in free agency and all you get for him is a comp pick, that would be stupid, and maybe well, they, they should, might if not they don't believe a, in him. Maybe they, they should might not have a him. choice but to let him go in free agency if they're not going to extend him. They cannot use the franchise tag on him. I just looked it up, and because he has that no trade clause, they could only he could only go to a team that see. Oh, we should have looked that up. Before well, the no, the no trade <laughs> clause. Should've, we should have, but no, you're, <laughs> the no but, trade clause doesn't okay. matter at all. That's irrelevant because. Why not? It, he can just only go to a team he that already, he accepts. Okay. Uh, let's say that you are a team and you want to trade for Dak, but Dak doesn't want to sign with you. Would you Would you trade for him? No. Okay, he already has a no-trade clause because he's on a one-year deal then. Every every quarterback, who every big-time player has a, has a no-trade clause because they're on a one-year deal. Not literally, but functionally. Sure. Okay. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I, I, I do see. Yeah, that makes sense, Matt. But the the no the not being able to be franchise tagged means that if he's gonna get traded, they have to do it now. Um. Otherwise, yeah, deadline. Do it at the deadline. <laughs> That'd be sweet. That'd be hilarious. That'd be the funniest who, thing ever, man. Who would who would trade for Dak? Let's let's. <laughs> 
Dak at the deadline next year would be absolutely Panthers. If if they were like if the if the Cowboys like were out the gate looking slow, the Eagles are like I think I, I think know, a team they get, they get back on track and they're like seven and three and the Cowboys are like four and five and they trade Dak at the deadline to some contender mm. or like oh, well, the, I, I don't think that would ever Panthers. happen, but <laughs> Man, there's a team that could panic about their quarterback situation. I think maybe the Browns, maybe. I think that's a little bit more likely. No, but seriously, with the, the what, New York. Uh, with what money? <laughs> oh, man. I thought you Who? got... You were talking... You actually, weren't you boasting about the bag that the Browns had recently? Am I making that up? The bag? Yeah, I think you said what they looked, he had a lot of cap space. Well, they're they're gonna, they have they have up. they have an avenue to like clear stuff up, but like <laughs> I wouldn't say they have a lot of cap space. Grab Dak, man. <laughs> <laughs> right, it, it, there are there's definitely teams out there that could make that could put together an offer. I, I think dolphins? Question <laughs> mark. I'm still waiting on that tour extension. I haven't seen any news. Golf being extended, not being extended yet, is also interesting. Yeah, I get that. The situation is Dak. Except maybe he can be franchise tagged. I don't know. Let's let's move on. It would be tricky. Yeah, the other uh, quarterback controversy that we need to discuss, draft-related. We've talked about our quarterbacks before, our quarterback rankings. And none of us are particularly high on J.J. McCarthy. In fact, I think we've become lower on him as the process has gone on. Um, but a lot of people seem to be getting higher on him. And some people are even projecting him to go in the top 10. Some are projecting him to go in the top five. I, I don't... I've seen rumors I, at two, bro. Well, the, yeah, the, <laughs> the news this week that is something new is that when Tom Pelissero asked around at the owners meeting, he most commonly heard JJ McCarthy's name connected to the commanders at number two. That that's the new development. <sighs> Buying or selling, I'll I'll throw it to you, Matthew Spanauer. JJ McCarthy, the number two <laughs> overall pick. You have got to realize if JJ McCarthy goes above Marvin Harrison Jr. In the NFL draft, dude, first off, <laughs> Ryan Day's fault, Kyle McCord's fault. He's a winner. Yeah. How are we falling for this in 2024? I'm not <laughs> saying that he's not like a decent prospect or anything. Number two overall is insane, bro. It is wild when in yeah. games, his team would just be like, hey, we don't trust McCarthy right now. We're not just, we're just not throwing it. Ridiculous. And number, number, number two, I could be, if he gets taken number two overall, I could be a gem. I will f always believe that I could be a GM. I could I could do the draft then, if if guys are, are yeah. making that like, why not? It's it's a crapshoot. Yeah. I, I have a shot at it. I I just think like May falling drastically and 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 McCarthy rising drastically even after they're done playing. I get you know we're really starting to dive in and sink in. I understand some of this might be smokescreen, and I still believe that. But like, what would be the point of smokescreening that you might take? like your quarterback four or five. Well, I almost wonder, I, I just don't trust the agents involved with all of this. And it could be McCarthy's agent. It could be That's some team, true. some team thing. Like maybe McCarthy, he's, he's represented by Drew Rosenhaus. Maybe he knows that if you drum up excitement at the top of the draft, like you could get someone to bite, you know, someone could panic. Someone could That's say, very true. And they could be coming from McCarthy's camp, I think. Um, who knows where it's coming from? But I just remember last year when all the smoke was that Levis was going to be a Colt towards the end. Like there mm. was so much connecting those two, including the uh, the Reddit post. But that could again, that could be an agent. You know, I don't know who knows who that was. It was somebody who was lying. But and then he fell. there was so much smoke connecting Levis to the Colts last year. And then the Colts released a documentary about their draft process. And in it, you can hear Ballard say, when we talk about these quarterbacks, it doesn't leave this room. Like, don't talk about it with your friends, your family. Like, my wife doesn't know shit about what we talk about in here, right? So it was <laughs> airtight and a fake rumor was circulating, right? 
And maybe the Colts are more tight-lipped than the average organization, but I feel like Washington's story has changed now three times. It just doesn't feel like anybody knows what's going on. So I don't think we can take any of it um, seriously. The, the Daniels stuff, the the McCarthy stuff, but that doesn't mean we can project it to be May either because we really have no heard. We really have heard no hype right. about him. So I, I would say that it's probably bullshit and JD McCarthy is not really in con- consideration for number two. Like that's what but my take all draft cycle is like, there's just a ton of, and this happens happening. consistently where a guy gets, yeah. hyped and it's like, it's not even like close, you know, it's like, yeah, Malik Willis um, had that same hype too. Hendon Hooker, you've brought up a lot. Theo. Yes. Um, ha- even Haskins, like back in the day, mm-hmm. like he when he fell to Washington, that was a bit of a surprise back in the day being 2019. Um, <laughs> I mean, uh, much Fields, every, every it happened with, and Mac Jones. Jones. Yeah. It happened yeah. I mean, with- it's, and so I, I think the takeaway, it's like I see these where it's like uh, the first four picks are quarterbacks and then Penix and Knicks both go in the top 12. It's like, you know. That would make it the greatest quarterback draft class in terms of capital spent of all time. I don't think it's quite that good. So I, I, I have my doubts about it, but maybe maybe I'm just falling for a smoke screen and getting mad about it and then being an Ohio State fan and being like, no, 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 no. Marvin Harrison is so much better. (laughs) This episode of Stay Hot is brought to you by the spring cleaning champions over at Manscaped. This season, make sure to groom your carpets and the drapes with the leaders in below the waist grooming. Clear out that winter bush with Manscaped's new lawnmower 5.0 and watch your confidence bloom like the springtime flowers. Embrace the season and join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our official offer. Go over to manscaped.com and use the code Stay Hot, all caps, all one word for 20% off plus free shipping because after I've started using Manscaped I can say I have finally caught the spring fever and of course you know you hate making a mess that's why they made this boy waterproof shave in the shower in the bath or even if you really want to in the ocean so once again go and get 20% off plus free shipping with the code stay hot again that's all caps all one word at manscaped.com that's 20% off and free shipping for the best below the waist grooming in the world with the code stay hot at manscaped.com nothing like a little spring cleaning in your pants steph curry makes you believe that you can do anything i mean look at me he has me believing that i can shoot threes when i play pickup basketball and the curry 11s are specifically designed with ultimate bounce grip and stability to allow everyone to do their thing New generations of ball players are coming up and showing the basketball world that the old rules do not apply. The future is exciting, fast, positive, and hungry. This NBA season, rock your favorite player and rep his shoes on and off the court. The Curry 11s are perfect for both the committed and casual ballers. The UA Warp Tech makes the shoe feel like it was designed for your feet, locked in no matter what you do on the court. Stop in your tracks with dual-density UA flow cushioning and traction, an emergency brake that you don't even notice. Steph's 11th signature shoe steps into the second decade of his sneaker career, pulling colorway inspiration from the wonders of a positive and modernized future on and off the court. Take these kicks with you when you leave the scrimmage and rep UA wherever you go. Do your thing. Change the game. The Curry 11 Future Curry is available now at currybrand.com. Unfortunately, we might be stupid about our DAC segment again. Dude, he would just, he would always use the no trade clause. He's not going to let himself get traded. Duh. Like he's going to hit free agency. Yeah. And then he would just get more money. If you're DAC, if you're DAC and, and you say, like, okay, the Cowboys don't want me anymore. I got one year on my deal and they want to trade me so they can get, uh, I don't know, like three first round draft picks. I'm good, dude. I'm I'm just going to, I'm just going to wait next year and then I can hit free agency and be, you know, the best quarterback or like the most valuable player to ever hit free agency in what, like the last decade plus. Yeah, Yeah. dude, I'd rather do that. (laughs) Uh, So I I think if the Cowboys do want to move on from deck, third round comp pick might be the best that they can do. And that sucks. And that definitely changes the math, but, um, (laughs) <laughs> i still see their vision oh no, man i think it's a tough pill to swallow i think it's such so a do tough you think they can swallow. win a super bowl by giving dak a big contract i don't know Your answer but like, must be yes but it must be yes 
But it has but, to but be my, asked. My, my, prob- my problem is that, like, who else is winning Super Bowls other than, like, Kansas City right now? It's been, it's been Mahomes, it's been Stafford, and it's been Brady over the last five years. Like, that's it. So don't. So, and one of those guys so, isn't in the league. So it's like, don't pay anyone ever. Like, it's, no. I don't know. It's like, it's tough. That's, that's my point. It's like, it's, it's just hard to know. People, because people, no one people is winning this Super Bowls. very same thing in the NBA where there'll, there'll be a team that like kind of hits its <laughs> ceiling as like a conference, yeah. like finals contender, but not really a contender. And people will be like, maybe after a while, it's time to blow it up when you can't progress any further. And it's like, well, you can't just be like pretty good. The answer is you can be pretty good, but you have to be on the right path to where it feels like it's possible for the team some point in the future to be a championship level team. Otherwise, interest is lost, right? Like, for instance, yeah. uh, let's say the Suns were to like fail this year and then they have no path to getting significant, but like they get first rounded. That'd be a lot different than like Orlando getting first rounded. Yeah, but this would be like if the Thunder let paul george walk instead of trading him for that bag that they did no no not really because because it, it's just i think it's just so different in the nba like you you don't let guys walk to free up cap space you can't one for one sign dudes like you can in the nfl cap space straight up is is a little bit more important and then also i mean Dak has a no trade clause like you can't do anything about it if he doesn't want to get traded he doesn't want to get traded Granted, I don't even know if they've had those Good conversations yet. with him, but they probably they probably already know what his answer would be. You know, mm-hmm. no, I'd rather just have the straight up free agency rather than sign, you know, a deal this year, which he's right. Uh, the damn right. no trade clause. Yeah, that's right. The, it's so it's very interesting. Unless, there, that's were, what I'll unless say. there were a team, unless there were a team that could that had a good enough team around them that Dak was like, you know what? I think I could go there and win a Super Bowl. And they had the assets to make it happen. I think I don't it's know about who that would money, be, though. But yeah, you'd get more maybe. money if you hit free agency. Yeah, and you get more freedom. And I, I think everybody would rather be a free agent than get traded. You get to pick where you want to go uh, to some extent. Maybe you would I if know, you were I, start getting I, traded, I, but... Yeah. And you're not draining the team you're going to of their assets, which is might be might be the most important thing of all. Like if, Bro, if, if Dak wants to go to assets, Miami, get CD too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> if, if if he goes to Miami and they trade like five first round picks for him, then Miami won't be as good as if if, if he just goes there on his own in free agency. Right. So that's another reason why you'd want to dissuade a trade. But yeah, I, I don't think the uh, McCarthy stuff is happening either. Um, I think he. I think he could very easily get. Tra- I can still buy Minnesota trading up for him because they did that trade already to get number twenty three. Um, could Minnesota trade for Dak? I guess they could. That'd be interesting. That'd be better than trading up for I Daniels and McCarthy. Too, it's, I think it's probably too late, and you would definitely hear noise about Dak potentially being on the move. And I guess it's also maybe. risky because if Dak does ball out, it's like maybe you can't get him back. Like you don't have him locked in like at all. <laughs> Yeah, right. No, he, I mean, he'll be don't. a free agent, but he would be. But like yep. you say, Matt, like that's the gamble you make right now. Like he's not going to win you a ring. So. But then again, but then again, do the Cowboys necessarily have to say in that? Like maybe Dak, what Dak is asking for is like to be way, way crazy high paid. So where it's like he's the number one guy by a lot because he knows other than that, the Cowboys only option is to like let him hit a like straight up free agency with fifty five million dollars of void money on their books. Dak has an unbelievable amount of leverage right now. So maybe we say at 55 million bucks, I'd rather keep Dak. What about at like 70? Because if he asked for that, like what would your call be? We don't know. So I guess I guess I'm more understanding of it, but there's so many details. Right. Are know. you suggesting that Dak might be asking for a lot of money to get in out of Dallas intentionally? No. Oh, I'm saying okay. I'm saying That's Dak weird. I'm saying Dak has has a bunch of leverage because he can get out of Dallas and there's nothing Dallas can do about it if they don't sign him right, right now. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. He's asking wanted, for a lot of money because he wants a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's that's my thought. Like, if you want like, to get damn, out of Dallas, really there's not really Dallas? a lot they can do about it. If they can't franchise tag him, he doesn't have to sign an extension, so he wouldn't have to do yeah. anything at all. But 
Anyway. Anyway, we do need to move on to the Under Armour Game Changer of the Week. Matt, who is it? It is, I mean, probably the guy who's <laughs> changed the game the most this week, Jonte Porter, uh, who has been <laughs> caught pretty red-handed uh, betting unders or instructing people to bet unders as Jonte Porter under on threes in games where he happens to re-aggravate an injury and only play three minutes hmm. is crazy <laughs> stuff, man. It's wild. Yeah. Um, and the NBA deserves a lot of blame for it, I think. Uh, if you want to promote gambling a ton, this is the type of stuff that's going to happen. Uh, and... Part of me likes gambling. Like, it is fun sometimes, but uh, don't you feel a little nervous that there's probably other guys who are not getting caught doing this? Although, I, I have to kind of believe that, like, you have to be so stupid, dude. Like, don't you feel like you know you're going to get caught? Doesn't it feel, like, so likely that they're going to catch you doing this? Maybe I'm wrong because if, if you know, if there's somebody who hasn't been caught out there... I feel like if you're, like, you giving know. your pick away in, like, a Discord, like, y'all bet my unders tonight like that is gonna get caught <laughs> but i definitely think there's a way to do it more under the radar than he did and who knows if that's happening in some level of american sports it it definitely could it definitely could rear its ugly head and be a huge scandal i mean we've had huge scandals in the past there have been times where the entire where an entire sport gets busted for doing something like all the big names it's happened yeah, in cycling. Man. It's, it's all happened mostly with PEDs over the course of history, but there's no reason why there couldn't like an entire era of, of sports couldn't get impacted by a prevalent gambling problem. And I'm not saying that that <laughs> yeah, is happening, man. but we have certainly made it easy for that possibility yeah. to arise. And yeah, I wish I wish we could do it over again because I do think that it's a does way more harm than good to have it so so prevalent. I don't know. I, I, I think the league it's the league itself promoting gambling and being like you're gonna have gambling on your you know your NBA league pass is probably mm -hmm. a bridge too far. I don't have a problem necessarily with legalized gambling in general. Um but when the actual leagues themselves start promoting it, it's like, I, I think that's where you start to get too close. Maybe I'm wrong and maybe it should just be illegal entirely. But um, I just think that's the thing with capitalism, right? Where like nothing is sacred. Yeah, and when they, when they make this money available, like these leagues aren't going to have any morality, right? Involving right. it. They, they want to embrace it. They want to up revenue as much as possible, profits as much as possible. That's like... It would be awesome to to legalize it and then heavily heavily sanction it, but that's just not really the world that we live in. Or, well, so this is kind of like, just... and it's Plus like that's kind of what it was be... before. Like, you, it was yeah. legal. You just had to do it on like at maybe a like a lot of times native reservations as a way to raise money on that mm -hmm. land they can have casinos yes. and like if you wanted a sports bet you could go there and do it like that's a better scenario than what we currently have it, it is seeming like and maybe they it's in but the it infancy so maybe they lock in and so. like find a way to prevent all of this but maybe they don't i don't that's, know that's honestly why i think like porter is going to be such a game changer nba has to be like here is what happens and honestly, dude, like, I, I kind of wonder if it's like, if you get caught doing this, like, you're banned, man, and you can't come back. Oh, because that's, that's got to be, it's yeah. just got to be like a perma ban, like you're done to the point where it's, it's not worth the risk. And I almost feel like for a lot of players, like, it's got to be not worth the risk. And I, mm -hmm. I, so I, I guess, you know, I, I don't want the, the, I don't, I, I'm not really rooting against Porter, like, I don't hate him. Um, I didn't bet any Porter overs, so I'm fine financially. Hmm. But I think if the league is going to take such a big part in gambling, they have to they have to you know put in just as much work to make sure that players aren't doing this. I think Porter is going to set the tone for that. And I think you know as much as it sucks to say, like if they don't respond heavily, then it's going to be really hard to forgive them for being involved in this mm -hmm. stuff. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I remember when the Ridley when Ridley got suspended and everybody was like, Oh, one year, that's pretty light. 
It's like ah, he kind of got off easy, dude. It's a very, very slippery true. slope I... to have to have players gambling on anything, even if it, even if he's away from the team, even if it's, you know, it's not betting on his team to lose or anything like that. Like he right. really got really lucky getting away. Any with type of inside this information like be, that makes it makes it crazy. This guy needs to be gone. For a minute. Right. Yeah, he, um, like easy call. Like like not even a not even a doubt in my mind. No one would be mad at it. I think it would set a good precedent because it's definitely well, it's, the, you got to set that precedent now because eventually it's going to happen to somebody bigger, probably. Maybe not. Maybe probably I, MJ. Like just... <laughs> right. <laughs> and I think I. I think you set the tone with stripping Porter of all of his stats and whatever awards he has. So when the time comes to to get MJ, <laughs> we can handle that appropriately. <laughs> I don't know. I, you know what? Here's the thing, though. I feel like I remember during the Ridley stuff being like, it feels like pretty harsh. But mm -hmm. I think that's wrong. I think you have to be pretty harsh if you're going to promote it at all. I think yeah. it'd probably be better for the league not to do it at all. I guess I get like, well, if there's money there, they're going to do it. And that's the way that leagues work. So, mm -hmm. yeah. But Porter, the thing yeah, about I, Porter, too, is he did it like super brutally bad. I mean, he just did it like... Um, oh yeah it's like the there. worst possible thing to do is bet your own unders and like incentivize <laughs> and throwing <laughs> no that that's that's as bad as it gets but um i've i've been liking to imagine the guy at FanDuel who was like what was what was the biggest winner tonight of all the nba props porter <laughs> jr under one like half a three yeah, it doesn't that seems a little fishy. No, that is I dumb. Think. Maybe it is easier to catch than we're when we're than we're anticipating. But uh like, I, unless I don't LeBron know. is doing it or something where it's like, <laughs> okay, I guess LeBron under on points could be if it honestly, if any I'm, under is the highest one stat for anybody, that's probably cheating. Nobody's betting. You're, under you're right. Bet. People don't like betting unders. Um, my glorious king LeBron would never bet on. Honestly, his own. it wouldn't no, surprise me if LeBron is fixing it because he he always sits out like a big baby um, with his uh, load management. Okay. He's probably. I, I it gonna, makes perfect sense he fix, that he, he fixes it by always hitting his over because he's so good. <laughs> yeah, Ritter was um, probably betting his over on interceptions, right? Ah, right. <laughs> didn't you have joe flacco as your quarterback by the way like wasn't he on pace yeah, to throw 40 in i can think of a worse browns quarterback actually <laughs> and you have winston I'm, now i'm leaving you have interception <laughs> man himself and watson all sucks. right man all right didn't man. dorian thompson uh, robinson throw like nine <laughs> interceptions in his first game and blow up he <laughs> didn't blow up <laughs> No, but it would. maybe the Falcons organization had his over on interceptions and then put him in a bad position. In a bad spot. Arthur Smith man. Is over. My, honestly, Arthur, Arthur Smith was betting the under on, on all of his stars' stats, and that's why he kept giving Tyler Algier the ball and, and feeding it to Johnny Smith instead of Kyle Pitts. That's what it was. It's got to be. That's so I don't know. If I was an NBA player, I wouldn't make any bets. And <laughs> that's very big of you. I think I think I think it's, <laughs> it is. And I, I think Porter was maybe a little bit controversially. Porter, Porter was in the wrong. Yeah. Porter. <laughs> Hot take. I like that. Porter was. I'm gonna make a video about that. Would be like, can I? Twitter poll. I, 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 I side with <laughs> Porter, the NBA. I might make yeah, that I, the I, thumbnail. I might make that the thumbnail. Just Porter was wrong, and then a big picture of him <laughs> with like some money. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's wrap it up. All right, man. That pretty much that does pretty much wrap things up for us. Uh, getting closer to the draft. Uh, under um actually. Yeah, under a month away now until uh, we're right there. So a lot of stuff coming up until then. Should be a lot of fun. But until next time, thank you all so much for tuning in. And we will catch you on the Flippity Flop.